Have you had this problem where you're playing with Foundry VTT and your players just can't connect to your machine over the internet for some reason? That's quite a common issue and I'm here to tell you that it does not have to be that way because there are hosting services for Foundry VTT that will take care of all of that and have your games running smoothly. Let me show you what those services are. Hi there, my name is Fondu. I run this channel called Dice and Easy where I give you Foundry VTT tutorials, TTRPG tips and tricks, and daily TTRPG memes as YouTube Shorts, so if any of that stuff interests you, hit that subscribe button down there so you get more of my content. Now once again, I'm of course talking about this from Foundry version 10's perspective, but this is applicable to all Foundry versions. So why would you need to host Foundry on a hosting service? Well, if you're running Foundry VTT as a desktop application on your PC and your players connect to your PC via the internet, there are two major issues that you're gonna bump into. First, if your players are not on your local network, you're gonna have to fiddle with port forwarding and other internet settings on your PC, which can be quite technical technical and complicated. Secondly, if your players are connecting to your PC via the internet, you need to have a good enough internet connection, both download and upload speed, so that your Foundry instance can handle sending and receiving all of this data. And this gets worse if you have big media files in your games. So because of these issues, you might want to offload all of that responsibility onto a hosting service, which will take care of all of that, and then you all connect to this hosting service. Now just some basic information about these hosting services. All of them require that you, the GM, have a Foundry VTT license key. You need that no matter what. So you need to purchase Foundry VTT, of course. But if you already have one, you just need to input that license key into this service to get things running. Oh, and also I wanna note that even if you're using a hosting service, you can still have Foundry VTT installed on your own computer as well. It's not mutually exclusive. So there are three hosting services for Foundry VTT. Their technical specs for the lowest tier of subscription is fairly similar to all of them with some minor differences. So I'm just gonna list the major features that all of them have now. So at the lowest tier, all of them offer the following. Five gigabytes of storage space, unlimited foundry worlds, and idle shutdown of the server, which means that if your server has been inactive for an hour or two, it will shut down the server. This is to save costs on the hosting provider's side, and that means that your players can't access your Foundry instance, which means that if you want them to be able to access it, you just have to go turn the server back on again. Now then, let me run you through the three Foundry VTT hosting services. For all three of these services, I'm going to run you through their price point, their major pros and cons, and then where their servers are located, because that might be crucial information for you. First up, we have Foundry Server. Foundry Server starts up at $4.95 US dollars per month, and there are several tiers above that as well, depending on your needs. The major benefit of Foundry Server is that they have a monthly restoration point, i.e. they take backups for you monthly, already at the lowest price tier. The downsides of Foundry Server is I couldn't really see where their servers are located. I know that the company is based off uh, British Columbia in Canada, but I don't know if all of their servers are only located there or if they have servers located around the world. And that could be an issue for you if you're not in the North American West Coast region. Secondly, if you want to upload assets like images, music, video, you're going to have to use an FTP client like FileZilla, which if you're not very technical, can be a bit cumbersome to get around since you'll have to learn another piece of software to use. And thirdly, this is not a major con, uh, but it might be a thing for some of you, is that only stable versions of Foundry are available. So if you want to try, for example, currently version 11 as it is in development, you can't do that with Foundry Server. By the way, unrelated question, I've been thinking, should I host a TTRPG campaign on startplaying.games for some kind of price. Would you be interested in that? I've been thinking like City of Mist or Pathfinder or something like that. I really want to run. If you'd be interested in playing in a TTRPG campaign run by me, let me know down in the comments, okay? All right, secondly, we have Molten Hosting. Molten Hosting starts at $4 per month. And the major pro here is that they have a weekly recovery point, i.e backups of your Foundry games already at the lowest tier. Major con here being that, again, if you want to upload assets 
to your server there, you're gonna have to use an FTP client like FileZilla, which I just mentioned also as a con for Foundry Server. Now then, the server locations are as follows. Virginia, Ohio, Oregon, Frankfurt, Germany, Sydney, Australia, and Sao Paulo, Brazil. So this might be a crucial information for you because the closer you and your players are to the actual server, the less latency you're going to have. This is why also I mentioned not knowing where the servers are for Foundry Server as a con because yes, like I said, if you're really far away from their server, you're going to have a lot of latency and that's going to impact your playing experience. Thirdly, we have The Forge. The Forge starts at 449 USD per month and this is the service that I currently use to host my Foundry games. I've been very happy with it. They have a great user interface and their Discord support has been great. So overall, I've been very happy with this over the year and a half or so that I've been using the Forge. The pros with the Forge are that asset management can be done directly in the Forge, so you don't need to use a third piece of software to put your images, music, etc. into the Forge. Then you have prototype and development builds of Foundry available if you would so wish. Thirdly, there is a marketplace for premium assets and modules that you can easily browse to buy, for example, adventures or music or maps. And there's also the same marketplace for free modules. So all of the modules that you find for Foundry VTT normally are going to be in the Forge's own interface, which makes it easy to install stuff. The major downside Side of the Forge is that backups are only available to the most expensive tier, which is 1229 USD per month, which can be a deal breaker for you. The Forge's server locations are as follows, North America, East Coast, Europe, Oceania, and Asia. Now, if you're thinking of switching over to one of these hosting services, but you're thinking, well, I already have a game running, so how can I bring that over? You can easily import your current local Foundry world and assets into one of these hosting services. And that way you'll continue just where you left off on your home game in the hosting service. I'm gonna leave links for instructions on how to do that for Molten Hosting and The Forge down in the description. However, I couldn't find these instructions for Foundry Server. I would assume that you can also do this for Foundry Server, but I can't guarantee it since I couldn't find instructions on how that's done, but for Molten Hosting and The Forge, instructions down there. So overall, these hosting services are fairly similar. It just comes down to what type of things are important for you, for example. Weekly backups might be a thing that you really enjoy, or you want a easy asset management pipeline. So depending on those things, one or the other will be your choice. Price ranges are quite the same, like I mentioned, around four slash five dollars a month. But I have been using The Forge. I can wholeheartedly recommend it. It's been a great experience for me. Nothing to complain about, really. Lastly, as a little extra here, you can actually do cloud hosting yourself and save some money, but this is gonna require some technical know-how on how to set up cloud servers. And I certainly don't know how to do that, which is why I'm gonna leave you instructions for Azure and Oracle server setups that you can put to have your foundry running in the cloud. Links down there if you are technical in that aspect and know how to do that kind of stuff. Check the links. All right, there you have it. These are the three major hosting services. So Foundry Server, Molten Hosting, and The Forge, which allow you to put your Foundry instance onto a server, and then all your network connectivity issues should be resolved. What did you think about this video? Are any of these services something that you would like to use or are currently using? If so, leave a comment down there. I would love to hear your thoughts and those comments actually help me out a lot. They spread my video, so please do that. And send this to anyone who might benefit from knowing about these hosting services, would you? And also like and subscribe down there. Those things all help me out so much and they help this channel grow, which I really wanna see. We're very close to being able to monetize this channel. And did you know, I also stream on twitch.tv slash dice and easy every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern European, that is 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern for you Americans. And over there I talk about Foundry and TTRPGs and play video games. So I would love to have you over to chat there with me and my community. All right, on the screen right now, you're gonna see another video of mine, another Foundry VT tutorial that you should definitely check out. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.